Let's talk about those arms in saw. Have you ever wondered why you're supposed to flip that back arm over? Let's look at it. It's really about strengthening your shoulder girdle and connectivity to the movement of your thoracic spine. And if you just throw away the movement of that back arm, you are really missing out. Okay, so let's check it out. It's easier to see with my back to you. As I take the twist in the saw, grounding down, anchoring through the legs, so I can decompress in the rotation, if I do nothing with this back arm and just take the front arm and go over, I have literally just thrown away all of the work of this left side of my body, and it is collapsed. It will probably still feel like a good stretch and like you're still having to pull against tightness, but you're missing out. As I twist, there's a moment where the collarbone has maximized its ability to stay 180 degrees, right? Okay, so from here is where I'm now going to rotate internally and rotate the humerus while still keeping that lift with the tricep. This forces me to have to contract into the upper abs and upper obliques in order to keep pulling me around in rotation, which allows the front arm to come more towards that pinky toe on the other side. Now here's the thing, that tricep and that rotator cuff, albeit you are internally rotated, you're still trying to fire all of that posterior tricep rotator cuff to help keep pulling the back fibers of your rib cage into that rotation. Then there's the stacking up. Don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. Lift it. Lift both arms to make your spine have to come up and rise to the challenge of vertical. And when this back arm flips over, it's going to be individual for everyone because of tightness in your deltoid, in your trap, and in your pecs in front. So as I come up, I'm gonna start externally rotating that arm so that I can keep the lift on the waist. I come through that 180 line and that's what rebounds me back up to center. I twist and now my shoulders are not the same. This back arm, my right arm starts flipping at a different time than my left arm did. I go over and up into, you're really lifting in space. Just because you're reaching for the pinky toe, don't go down to the thing, right? Lift and reach out over it, okay? Then as I stack up, that back arm flips over and comes back around. Now, you can play with all kinds of choreography for your arms and shoulders. Um, try this one. And as you twist, rotate both arms externally, lift. Think of pressing a magic circle up higher. Arms come back out to the side and twist, right? What if I were to twist? And then instead of rotating palms towards each other. Let's rotate palms away as they come up. Oh my gosh, that's so hard. They're only going so high because of tightness everywhere. And you just kind of weren't meant to do that, but you need that range to stretch your lats, right? What if we go over, we take the arms up, we come back center from here as we open back up, maybe a little swan, right? And I know I've got my legs folder, but folded, but imagine you're doing this in your saw with your legs apart. You could even do it in your spine twist with your legs forward. If I go over to this rotation, lift up, come back center, pressing to the T as my chest lifts up. Now that is all kinds of burn all up in through here, which makes my neck feel so much better because it actually distinguishes the cervical spine from the grip of the traps and the grip of the shoulders that we live in so very much. You have to remember that you really can't do much with the shoulders if you aren't dealing with the spine that they are attached to.